Hey, welcome to episode 280. Uh, before we talk to Rick Myers at San Diego Comic-Con, we want to talk about our new sponsor. It's pretty cool. Touchofmodern.com. Love this website because uh, it's just sort of like a male lifestyle. It's got clothes and... Uh, it's cool. It's like a secret area of like uh, products that you wouldn't normally know about, but the really cool stuff. You're like, oh, that's really cool. It's like looking at one of those catalogs that you're like, I didn't know I wanted that, but I want this now. Well, it's cool, yeah, because what, what Touch of Modern does is they find cool stuff from, from tech gadgets to gear to clothing to watches to, to weapons to art to art yeah <laughs> weapons um i mean it's cool stuff and and there's sort of like survival knives and so, oh yeah in there they've got those cool solar charging things like that was really cool i think i'm gonna get one of those there's like a uh, a solar charger that um it like unfolds and then it can charge all your devices it has like usb and stuff i'm looking at that when i'm traveling because that's one of those things like or earthquake tsunami country boom which where is where we live yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so there's really cool stuff, and and the great thing about uh, Touch of Modern is it there's no subscription. No, you just got to sign up and give a profile or whatever. Um, you don't even have to give them a credit card until you're ready to buy. Right. Uh, so you can shop. You can shop, and then you know you can have them send you emails or not saying we got new stuff because they that's the thing they go out and they find these great deals and they're limited. Yeah, and they change every uh, couple days. Yeah. So everything it's it's something you kind of want to always check back for. I just got this really cool pair of shoes because I've got black dress shoes. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, most... Well, you're a man. I'm a man. I'm a you have to have them. Yeah, I'm not an idiot. I'm not an animal. <laughs> um, and then I've got, you know, skateboard shoes and that I normally wear on stage. But I needed like a, a mid-range, like a, a gray or a brown sure. dress shoe that you could wear with... Between the, man and hippie. Between, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say between man and college professor. Yeah. <laughs> So, something that you would wear with a jean, Chris, with a slack. Sure. Um, you know, and a With collar. a jacket with patches on the Patches elbows. on the side, a pipe uh, <laughs> that's got chalk dust on it yeah. from the day's lecture. Uh, and uh, I look good when I'm trying to sleep with my grad students. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, that's mm-hmm. exactly. It's not as frowned upon as no. it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard stories from my dad. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, go to touchofmodern.com and uh, sign up. And here's the cool thing. Any friend you refer, you get $20 in your account. Right. Now, there's no coupon codes, like we said, or any landing pages. You just go and sign up and you shop. That's go to touchofmodern.com and sign up for free, and you'll join over 5 million people that have signed up for this thing. Yes. It's, it's really cool. And some of them may be grad students. Ooh, well, let's hope. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to the uh, <laughs> on the road on Coming the road the on the annual road. Uh, hotel room episode <laughs> somewhere in an undisclosed location <laughs> in San Diego. <laughs> Comic Con Kung Fu wrap up. Yeah. New summer movie. Rick Myers. Uh, <laughs> I'm shot first. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, this is uh, I don't know our third or fourth year doing this now. Oh, this is yeah. great. How long have you guys been co-hosting the uh, Travaganza? Do any of us remember? It has I, to be three or four years. At yeah. least three. I want to say... It might be four. four. I think this yeah, was, I think last night was the fourth. Yeah. yeah. So we've been doing... This is the fourth annual. I yeah. Assume. So 11, 12, yeah. 13, 14, 15. So 12, I think, was our first year. Doesn't matter. This is be, this one will be better than all. Yeah. <laughs> and it was Neil's first. He was actually nervous about it. I'm like, don't be nervous about it. It's going to be a fun panel. You just comment on movies. And... Neil, Neil was the ninja. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was... The deer in the headlights ninja <laughs> colors. Um, it was just a little oh yeah, I'm little closer. Little, cl- little closer. I just yeah. Oh, that's not a weird. problem. Oh, like, like, he would be quiet, and every once in a while, he'd be like a joke sniper. He would yeah. throw one in. <laughs> it was great. So l- let's talk about a little bit about last night first. How much fun yeah. it was, as always. And now, for those of you that don't know, it's uh, Rick Myers hosts the uh, superhero kung fu movie extravaganza no every movie, year. No movie. We edit out the movie. Edit superhero kung fu extravaganza. So San Diego Comic Con superhero. Kung Fu Extravaganza, and they've added this year the 18th annual, so they're counting down for, or counting up for me. Yeah. So we never had the numbers in before. This is the first year. It's called the 18th annual San Diego Comic Con Superhero Kung Fu Extravaganza. Um, now starring Rick Myers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So 18 years you've been doing this. This yeah. is like like we said our our fourth. I, you know, I love this thing. And to me, I was talking about it last night afterwards about. 
this is just more of the magic and power of podcasting. The whole reason we are all sitting here recording this and doing that panel last night was because of podcasting. You started listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. and then I just was down in San Diego maybe five or six years ago and just was walking around and was, and looked at the program. I was like, well, God, this sounds fun. I walked in. You were just talking about all these awesome movies. I'm yeah. like, this is great. I talked about it on this podcast, and you got a hold of us, yeah. and you were like, you know, I'm going to be in L.A., and that was that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it started. It always started as a clip show. Sometimes I was. Uh, it started when I was representing a specific company because back in the day, uh, 18 years ago, there was more than one company who was really excited about buying the rights and distributing uh, kung fu films, specifically martial art movies in general, Asian cinema, which was very fertile then with the Asian stuff. It's not as fertile now for a variety of insidious reasons, which we'll so get now, into. So what happened to a lot of those other companies? They just... They died because, or? as you all know, listening to this on your device, the podcast on your device, if you want a movie, you're not going to a store most likely and buying a DVD. Right. And, uh, and also, all of you who are getting this for free, I understand. I want everything for free, too. And I used to have a huge collection of first uh, VHS tapes, Oh man, I go even back beyond VHS tapes and DVDs. I do not have a huge collection. Well, I do, but it's in storage because some of the films I never thought I'd get to see, widescreen subtitling, uh, are on YouTube. All the great kung fu movies, really, except for some of the new ones, which aren't as great anymore for a variety of reasons, which we'll get into, uh, are on YouTube. So that's that's are what they happened. Subtitles to too, like yes, widescreen subtitling. Really, it, I think I've mentioned this in the past. It galls me when I see t people like Quentin Tarantino doing homages. I'm making quote signs of uh, of kung fu movies by doing scratchy film, full screen, bad dubbing. Because that's not the way I saw them. I was down in Chinatown, New York, with six different movie theaters that only showed Asian film, Chinese film, not even Chinese, Hong Kong film. Uh, every week, 12 different movies every week, 52 oh, weeks wow. a year, and they were all beautiful widescreen, beautifully subtitled. So I still dislike dubbing. I mean, if you listen to my and Jeff Yang's audio commentary on Drunken Master, at one point we switch over to the audio track and start screaming with derision and, and uh, angry joy at the horrible dubbing. The hugely inaccurate dubbing. Uh, so subtitling is always preferable to us. And that's the way I saw these movies. So when people put them down by being cheap little kind of Bruce Bloitate, all the, the entire genre being Bruce Bloitation, I, I, my back gets up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's part of, like, how most Americans saw them was, like, on TV. Right. Or something that had those, all that horrible stuff you talked about. I... Was that like a money grab then, like the Bruce? No, actually, that, what, that, that, that wasn't. What, what happened was a, a company called Word no World Northall made a deal with the Shaw Brothers studio and bought the rights, the distribution syndication rights, to 106 of their best kung fu movies, which were shown throughout America, including Hawaii, where it was prime time, top of the Nielsen's in Hawaii. Now, just that sentence alone, 106 of their best kung fu movies. Right. Because that, that one sentence is amazing. Right. Yeah, because they made 750. Right. <laughs> yeah. And also, they break it down, and there's Kung Fu, there's Wu Sha, there's Zhang Hu. Uh, they, they do the subgenres. Uh, to them, it's, it's like our Westerns, uh, it's their Easterns. And, they, they, and, and, and Westerns range from, you know, really low down, uh, what's his name, Johnny Ted Mack or whatever, up to Roy Rogers, up to John Wayne. Well, and the same thing with Kung Fu movies. And, but, uh, recently, I did an audio commentary. In fact, a couple of days ago, just before the extravaganza, I did an audio commentary for a new DVD, which is going to be compiling two hours of the best original uh, old-school kung fu previews. And I discovered a whole new world there, an incredibly fertile, amazingly talented world, with guys just going out and making these movies. And every single person on the movie had written five, directed ten, choreographed eighteen, starred in more than two hundred, uh, composed, production managed, makeup, they all did it, and the kung fu was awesome. Right. And it was just natural to these people. It would be like Sandlot 
baseball all filled with Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle <laughs> and Gary Jeter and just let's go let's do it and while we were watching these previews again these super cheap movies that were probably made in less than two weeks you guys know as, as filmmakers you, your jaw would drop at what the camera crew was doing and the camera crew had to be about three people the cameraman the camera mover and the focus puller these guys were kung fu masters Oh yeah, you the, the, to crank those types of movies out in that short of a time frame, the the crew had to have a had to be experts had to be too. experts yeah. in kung fu. They had to be and to capture the movements because the movies right. are wildly complex and they're doing. Did they just get a music video snake. director to? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to chop it up in such a way that you can't tell what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so it it really it it. it it makes me sad that the genre is essentially going the way of the exploitation film. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did that, my book for one week only, The World of Exploitation Films, when I started the book, it was a uh, celebration. And by the time I finished, it was a memorial. And that's what's happening with Kung Fu now. Uh, the great Kung Fu era is over, probably never to return. Do you think, though, let me ask you this. I mean, obviously, there's so many factors here. There's, there's the commerce of it. There's the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. But do you think, though... In the way that digital now, um, and not just iTunes where you can rent and own, mm -hmm. uh, you can high def, you can you can get bonus material now as that, that's downloadable. You've got Netflix, which is just like mm -hmm. the golden era for documentaries. Yeah. Do you think though, with all those things in place, that this could somehow reopen a, a new golden era of, 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 of kung fu that's not the issue the the spirit is willing the body has got a bit of a problem because it's kind of like saying do you think the golden age of fred astaire and gene kelly will return not until we train more gene kelly's and fred astaire's that's the problem it's not the willingness of the crews as you guys know american crews british crews asian crews french crews indian crews are awesome Right. You know that if you're not wildly talented or if you're any part of a prop, if you've got any drug problem or whatever, you're out oh, of the yeah. crew. No, the, it's, you've got to do your job. You don't understand, like, a, a production crew uh, is, you have you are the best of the best. Right. People don't understand this, and it was funny, I was, you know, just in having to deal, I had to do, I'll just come up company on this. I, I've had to do some community service for a jaywalking <laughs> ticket. Not, not, make, not that making was you. Stuff. That was yeah. jaywalking and then it was compounded because I missed my court date because we were in Japan shooting earbuds. So, <laughs> so, uh, which is completely, that was completely. I don't right. want to hear your sorry excuses, yeah. <laughs> defendant. No, and that's why I got yeah. four days, 32 hours mm. of community service. So, mm. I was, so I'm doing beach cleanup. Which I was like, right, I'm given the options, I'll clean. I go down and I yeah. clean the beach by me. I yeah. like it. I yeah. like keeping my beach right. clean. Uh, and a couple times I've worked with guys that in, in production. And you know, a lot of times they said, "Now, Graham, you don't have to go shirtless." Like, no, this is part of my service. Oh, no, I'm in a shirtless. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why are you using that katana to yeah. pick up the refuse? <laughs> yeah, I just, Isn't I, that, doesn't that hurt the blade a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Do not enter. Yeah. <laughs> I just stand guard. Um, so. I, and it was funny, you know, we're, 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 this guy I was working with, we're, you know, he's a production guy, and we're just seeing these dudes that work for the city, and they do a decent job, but so much of their job is like, they don't work mm -hmm. too hard, or just, you know, we've got time to kill. They're not looking forward to it. Right. Yeah. And you think about, and I've, I've dealt with that sometimes in dealing with people in the corporate world and right. stuff like that, and, and we were both just like, it's production. There's a time, there's a budget, there's a time frame, and you better deliver. And if you don't, you are fired. I've yeah. seen people fired on the set. Like, mm -hmm. they screwed up bad, and it's like, you're gone. Yeah. And so that, that's, that's an interesting... So, yeah, like I said, the crews are always winning, yeah. but the talent is a problem. There's two things in terms of kung fu movies that make them different and special. This is why most people do mixed up martial arts or martial arts, because okay. anybody can be taught that. Kung Fu, not anybody can just do. Right. Even in something like The Matrix, and you look at Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne, and Kung Fu people are in the audience, like you know the old World War II experts, oh, that uniform wasn't you know, right. used then. <laughs> and we're going, oh, look at that elbow. Look at that balance. Look at the way their head's cocked. That's not... it. And, and the audience can tell it's the same thing again. I like using the comparison of Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly, because Fred Astaire is Jet Li, Gene Kelly is Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. Jackie Chan idolizes Gene Kelly, and there's a reason for that. And when somebody gets on stage next to Gene Kelly and starts dancing, 
and isn't as good as him, it's readily apparent. Right. So the the thing that made Jet Li, the thing that made Jackie Chan, and Jackie Chan's case was a Peking Opera School, and Jet Li's it was an academy, a Wushu Academy. Wushu means martial arts, Kung Fu means human achievement, uh, in China. Those things are all being closed. It's all oh, being closed. That's now, why? Why are they being closed? Uh, for well, for a variety of reasons. Let me just, uh, however, continue. The other thing that is the problem is not only are the stars not being made, the choreographers aren't being made. Oh. And you know, and choreo action choreography is very similar to dance choreography. When Busby Berkeley does something, your jaw's dropped. And when whatever Joe Hackjob does something, it's kind of like, all right, well, let's wait till this number is over. And it's very true of, of kung fu, especially of kung fu fighting. You know my ongoing complaint about how generic the action is now on television and movies to the point where I, I joke now that I used to say that you could switch the heads of the fighters without affecting the fight. Now you could take characters from different shows and pluck them down <laughs> during the fight on another show and it wouldn't affect the fight because everyone, the women, the men, young, old, all fight the same. And they're not even fighting in character. I think the only one I've seen lately who fights in character is the a character Ming-Na plays on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She doesn't fight correctly or effectively, but it's in her character that she's trying to prove something to herself and to others that she's as strong and as badass as men are. But it's not an effective way. I always want to magically wander into that show as the old white bearded fellow and say, now, are you, are you tired of proving how tough you are and you want to start proving how smart you are? Do you, want to act, do you want to prove, again, how tough you are or do you want to win the fight without going to the hospital? Right. And that's, you know, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. What was your question again, Chris? Why were the Kung Fu uh, oh, yeah. schools closing? China has always had a very, if China was a Facebook page and it was saying that it was in a relationship with Kung Fu, the relationship would be termed complicated. <laughs> I keep reminding people, remember, the Shaolin Temple was burned four times by the Chinese government. So it's uh, what happens is when you have 1.7 billion people to control, and I use the word control as in a nice way, you don't want them learning a self-improvement system that would enlighten them and open their minds. You want wushu, where they're all in nice little rows, doing the exact same thing on the command of the coach. So these places, just as the Japanese, when they occupied Korea, hunted down the Taikun uh, practitioners and teachers, which is actually Korea's official martial art, and then forced... Way to uh, go, Chris time. Mancini. Oh, I'll talk over it. And then for, well, this wow. is a controversial statement anyway. And then <laughs> forced Taekwondo onto the Korean people. The, uh, the Chinese, if you go to the Shaolin Temple now, it's, it's a tourist trap. It's a tourist trap surrounded by fake, by fake um, uh, schools. And you could, you could show that in a movie pre-1997 in Hong Kong. You can't show that anymore. In other words, the movies have, uh, the, some of the movies we were watching last night, you saw the jingoistic, you saw the uh, vaguely uh, 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 propagandaistic. And there was, some, there was one I didn't show last night because I couldn't bear to show it. I'm, I was a huge fan of Jackie Wu Jing, who I thought was going to be the next Jackie Chan, Jet Li. And he made a movie recently called Wolf Warrior, which I was going to show, but there's no, and he's got Scott Adkins who's a very respected English martial arts actor, as the villain in it. And I said, oh, the fights in this are going to be awesome. There were no fights. There were fights, but it was all battle. And there were all battle food. It was all guns. It was all war stuff. Here, here was a movie with, with arguably Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire in it, and they didn't dance. Right. And, and, and the whole movie is, who, and Jackie Wu Jing directed it as well, was basically... A whole, it was an entire kowtowing movie. Please, look how patriotic I am. Look how much propaganda I can put in one film. Please let me continue to be a film star here in your country. And it was, I just, I literally lowered my head and shook it. Because uh, what, what a terrible waste of talent and skill. But Mama China's not too crazy about Kung Fu right now. They're much more comfortable with martial arts. Another example from last night, I showed the Wong Fei Hong re reboot, 
which uh, Wong Fei Hong is the most famous uh, character in Kung Fu cinema history, going back to the beginnings of cinema in China, or excuse me, Hong Kong, separated. Hong Kong is China now, but back then it was just, it was Hong Kong under British rule, and all the way up to today. So the reboot they created, rather than make him the Taoist healer and great Kung Fu, a considerate, loving Kung Fu master, he always was, as played by Quan Ta King, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Donnie Yen, etc., 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 although Donnie Yen never has officially played him, he's played his father, he's played other things, but in any case, um, they turn him into Bruce Wing by way of by way of Christian Bale and James Bond by way of Daniel Craig. So he's he's just an angry, greased up, muscle driven, fist driven, and you know uh, what did I miss? Fist, anger, muscles. When they used fists, anger, and muscles, ain't really kung fu. It's mixed up martial arts. Now, are there any like independent? Chinese filmmakers that are outside of the system, like living in other countries that are trying to make um, martial arts. Allow, or good allow me to laugh. <laughs> um, I will be quietly chortled to myself. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other part of the equation, going back to completing uh, the answer to your question, Graham, is that the other insidious aspect in terms of uh, putting another nail in Kung Fu's coffin is that everybody wants to kowtow to China. China, because of all the money. Not just the money. In the, well, the money comes from the cinemas. And one of my, when we open a film wide in America, it's 5,000 screens. When you open it wide in China, it's 25,000 screens. Wow. Yeah. And the money has now kept up. Jackie used to joke whenever, because his were the only Hong Kong films for a long time that were allowed into China. And every time they were allowed in, he goes, oh, another 43 cents. But that's, <laughs> but that's 1.7 billion 43 cents. So... Everybody, and you know as well as I do, that the, the Hollywood and China are working so hard to get in bed together. Well, uh, yeah, right, I mean, sure. every big blockbuster movie has Iron Man has shot extra footage. Just right, they China. shoot it there. Including a, soy <laughs> be, uh, including a soy milk commercial in the movie. Oh, that I didn't know. Oh, it's awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's an it's amazing moment in the Chinese cut of Iron Man 3, was it? I think, I think it was Iron Man 3. 3. Yeah. Uh, where there's a, a doctor character and a nurse character played by f very famous uh, Chinese actors, and and they're 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 dealing with the wounds of Tony Stark. And then, Here, take this. You know, big shot of the the soybean, the soybean wow. milk, soy milk wow. uh, canister. They give this will help you a lot. It's very good for health. And then when they go outside, there are a bunch of school children singing a soy milk song about how beneficial and nutrition. Nutritionists, nutritionists. That's I'm sure that's the right, <laughs> right use of that word. That footage has to be on YouTube. Oh yeah, now. that's where I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah, but, it's it's amazing that you, you, and we've talked about it on the show before how how Hollywood is the big blockbusters will have Chinese actors. They mm -hmm. will have scenes that are shot in China. Like, isn't there a business reason too? Like now, well, that's how they, that's how they'll get distribution. Right, because the, the only China only is it accepts. just distribution, or is it like a product placement where they help with the budget? It all too? depends on what. That's the other issue. You guys know what it's like to work with TV and movie executives. Now imagine dealing with that, but also dealing with a different government official, right? Virtually every day or week, depending on what film. It follows you home. Yes, basically, <laughs> and then sits at the dinner table. And go, could you put a shark in it? <laughs> And uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. That's totally. An, uh, I apologize. That is not the way it goes. The way it goes is you will put a shark in it. Yeah. I'm so happy you're putting a yeah, shark, shark in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, ooh, you okay. honor my family by yeah, putting a shark in the movie. Yeah. And also, could, well, I won't do this. There's rumors that there are other things going on too, mm -hmm. in terms of things under tables. Sure. Yeah. I mean, well, let, let, so let's get into. It'd be weird that American movie studios were doing anything underhanded, though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> recently that's never happened. No. no our no. our <laughs> buddy Eric Jacobus is in China, and he's reported to me he went to see SPL too. SPL was an extremely it was known as Kill Zone here, uh, a, an excellent kung fu action movie with Donnie Yen and Sammo Hung, and the sequel has Tony Ja. And Wu Jing in it. Oh. So we were all exactly that. See that sound? Yeah. That was the sound we all made. Graham made the sound for us all. <laughs> and Eric was very excited about it too. And he was in uh, Beijing, and he went to see it, and he reported back tragedy. Oh. They attached them to wires and jerked them around. There was no balance. There was no gravity. Kung Fu. And again, it was 
oh, it was like Forbidden Kingdom all over again. Well, I, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna bring up two things again. Yeah. First of all, um, I mean, I don't, it almost seems like this is a crazy statement, but from what I'm seeing, and Avi, you can answer this, is like. Eric Jacobus, the only guy out there actually doing. I mean, like, I, I'm I'm watching action scenes, and I'm always like, mm, Eric does it better. Yes, I. The reason that Eric became a co-host of my show, and that I featured Eric's work, is that there are many, many people who have asked me to promote their stuff, and you've seen some yeah. of them, the great sure. Jan Lacanus of doing Justice for Hire. I'm not talking behind Jan's back. I have criticized his work consistently, and but I keep featuring it because I want him to get better. It was another person who asked me to include a preview on my show, and I had to tell him it's just it's not going to reflect well on you if I show this. And he got extremely upset. The thing that most martial arts filmmakers or amateur filmmakers miss is you've got to make a good movie. You can't right. just have right. yeah. Everybody can you know be choreographed to look decent. This is as the problem with just action movies. In yes, it's just right. like, sure. Just put sure. some big explosions in right. there, and everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the, we saw it with Terminator. It just yeah. it, it oh, literally, Terminator Genesis. Yeah, yeah it, it lumbered from set piece to set piece with action and blowing stuff up with no care as for as for actually connecting the scenes together. And you guys know as well as I do that in terms of blowing up stuff real good, nothing beats Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, God. But that's the work of an artist. Yes, right. that's true. that was somebody who knew how to put scenes together so it has a cathartic effect. And it was also, even to the fact that not only was it a specific vision of the filmmaker, but it was also um, based in practical effects, and then they put um, the computer-generated right. effects on top of it, right. but it was based in, like, those cars were real. They had gravity and weight. You know they were driving. Here's what was going on. You had story, mm -hmm. you had practical effects, and the, the computer was just used to sort of enhance it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, not get in the way, not not go, hey, look right. at how this this team of people in Korea, look what they did. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, in it, fact, we've gotten emails about it, how there are a fair amount of computer-generated effects in Mad Max, but yes. they're so grounded in right. the practical ones, it looks beautiful. Yeah, you don't, you don't even yeah. notice. Like, yeah. you're like, is that... Well, and also, let's be fair, which is, it it's the artistry of, it's the artistry of the artist, because Jurassic World... Fast and Furious 7, all these things which I quite enjoy, yeah. I really love, are not in any way based on practical. <laughs> but the people behind the computer know what they're doing and, and entertain you. I, I, we're, we're, there, a lot of that is China-oriented in that they want to make these big, dumb movies. China loves it when you have a dumb American character in your film. That's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the keys to their kingdom. And, but as long as the film is good, I, mean, I was sitting there... Like an American Jurassic character World. who doesn't understand um, global economies or tariffs? Yeah, that, yeah. among other things. <laughs> but I was smiling, uh, a smile from ear to ear during Jurassic World while I was saying, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. Right. And that's rare, because I'm totally into structure. It was literally just eating an ice cream sundae on a roller coaster. Right. Like, it really had no value for it. It was just... <laughs> but I am getting, I am getting a mass slaughter fatigue. There must be a better word for that, that, that uh, an alliterative word for that goes well with fatigue. Because during Jurassic World, I leaned over to my friends when the worst of the collateral damage was happening. And I said, don't you remember the days when the hero used to prevent that? Right. And I think there, that's the one... It started that way, though. That was so interesting. Like, when you thought yes, the raptors are going to eat the first person, yeah. uh, he actually saves the first right. person. But you know why I think that's too, and I, I completely agree with you, because we're seeing the same big action set pieces in every movie. Right. How many times are you going to see a building block explode? Or like like I even said for Terminator Genesis, oh, they just took shots from San Andreas. It, literally, it was, you know, you see yeah. the tidal wave and the Golden Gate Bridge. It's the same shots and scenes in right. every movie. Oh, look, global destruction, global chaos. It's a, no, while you were talking, it, it made me think that the reason for that is that there's, because of the divisiveness of the media now and the politics and all the rest of it, that if you have a hero saving San Francisco, the audience is just not accept it. No, we, we see doom in our future. So we want to go to the movies to get that feeling out. Oh, and now, suddenly, you, now suddenly, you're referencing Tomorrowland. Oh, yes, which didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. It did not work. That but was... 
tragedy. Great intentions. Yes. <laughs> look, look, I want to get into the. Look, I want to talk about the, the clip you showed last night of that Jackie Chan movie. It was the last clip. The you very showed last clip because it's the only one with kung fu. Because well, you said this movie is actually coming out. Yes. So let's, let's get a little preview about this. It's called. I'm pumped yeah. for this. Yeah, I'm pumped for it too um, because I'm hoping Dra uh, Lionsgate, which is going to be releasing Dragon Blade. Uh, huge epic, the most expensive movie made in uh, China now. Um, isn't, in, that in like a, uh, isn't that like a isn't that like a marketing term? Because don't we hear that every year? The most expensive movie ever because made it's in China? Well, no, yes, <laughs> and it's true because they keep upping it. They keep upping it. But Jackie Chan is 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 Mama's boy. And so Mama loved, so Mama let him put Kung Fu in it, but only one scene, which is the scene I showed to you, everybody last night, which is at the very, very beginning of the film. It is too long, and it is, like most of Jackie's recent films, it's not just his heart on his sleeve, it's his spleen, it's his liver, it's part of his kidneys. Uh, so, but if you accept that also, it is clearly designed to break out in America successfully because it co-stars John Cusack as a good Roman legionnaire. And Adrian Brody is a very bad <laughs> Roman legionnaire. Very bad. John Cusack is in the movie with yeah. Jackie Chan? Yeah. Oh, and that's great. He oh. loved it. He loved it. He said, when he was offered it, he said, oh, yeah, <laughs> I am going. I forgot what desert they filmed in. But, but this so wasn't a scene from Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> I think it would be <laughs> great if they tied it in. <laughs> There's really good kung fu in Hot Tub yeah. Time Machine. I have to, I have to rewatch Dragon Blade now to see if there's any illusions. If you see a little towel sticking out under his Roman, his Roman yeah. skirt. You know that scene where Craig Robinson's yeah. in the tub and yeah. he's trying yeah. to, you know, defeat his enemy without embarrassing him. <laughs> but Jack, it's a guy named. Uh, it's um, uh, gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Because I really like him. I'm blanking on his the director writer's name because it's a name that's like another Chinese film filmmaker's name, but he's he's gotten better and better. He's a young filmmaker. With each of his films, he did a film recently called The White Storm, which I would recommend people look at. He's he's one of the best of the historical guys because he really gives it verve and heart. But this is clearly Jackie's movie, because this whole movie is about the highest form of Kung Fu, which is to make your enemy your friend. And the scenes of cooperation, it degenerates into Lord of the Rings at the end and the, and the Battle of the 23 Armies. Uh, because yeah. the whole the whole plot is based on a small band of Chinese uh, peacekeepers on the Silk Road who is trying to keep peace with the 23 different cultures that traded on the Silk Road. And then they, uh, this is very doubtful, but they run afoul of some uh, renegade uh, Roman legionnaires who are running from an unfair uh, coup. And that's Adrian Brody's, the evil general who's manipulated that. And John Cusack is trying to save the rightful young heir. Uh, and he, he, John Cusack's a reasonable man. Jackie Chan is a reasonable man. And they start to cooperate to save this, um, you can't really call it a village or even a town. It's a fort, basically, at a certain strategic point on the Silk Road. And it's, the whole thing is really interesting, really fascinating. Finally, there's some decent... Guaylo acting in a in a Chinese film because usually they found their Guaylo, which is foreign devil, their foreign actors by just walking the streets of Shanghai, where there's a lot of expats and go, "Want to be in a movie?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here that we have Adrian Brody and John Cusack, who are act and I love it. A lot of people have uh, critics have uh, condemned Adrian Brody's performance because it's too over the top, too mustache twirling villain kind of thing. But I thought it was perfect because both Cusack and Brody looked at the style of acting that Jackie was doing, which is always very passionate and very close to the surface. And they and they did it. That's what they did. All of the all of their performances are passionate and compassionate. That might be have been direction from uh, the director yeah. too. Yeah, I'll, I'll think of it. Look it up. You know, look up his name, the Dragon Blade. So Dragon uh, Blade, and do we know when this is coming out yet? It's coming out very soon, uh, but it may be delayed if the Weinstein's have anything to do with it. What the <laughs> Weinstein's would have anything to do with it, I don't know. But they well, they cut it up too. They're, I'm hoping they do actually. Daniel Lee is the director. Daniel Lee. There we go. Danny Lee is Danny Lee is another another great English. Uh, 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 excuse me, Hong Kong filmmaker. Who, who's done some amazing movies, uh, horror, action. He did uh, 14 Blades, things. he did Three Kingdoms, Resurrection right. of the Dragon. White, that's that Daniel Lee. White Vengeance. Yeah. Danny, Danny Lee was did The Untold Story and all these other things, but that's why I confused him. But Daniel Lee is a, does a really nice job with a, very, with a lot of pressure, 
from both the government and, you know, when you work with Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan's the boss. And it's, I hope Lionsgate does cut about 15 minutes out of it. Because in the middle, toward the three-quarter point, before Adrian Brody appears, it, it does get a little too much. And this will be subtitled? And... There's no guarantee. Because wow. Brody and Cusack speak English in it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, even should they Roman. be speaking Latin? They should speak yeah, Latin or Italian, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Um, but, you know, they're not going to spend that. So, But more importantly, do they have British accents? Yeah, let's hope they have. <laughs> Hello. No, they don't. They I'm actually from don't. Rome. You know, at one point, you know. For the glory of the Roman Empire. Uh, the only thing <laughs> no I did, one knew English. The only thing I didn't like is that moment when Cusack holds up the uh, boombox <laughs> and tries to get Jackie to come so, down. So Jackie's talking to me. He goes, look, yeah. Jackie, I don't want to buy anything processed. Yeah. I don't want to process yeah. anything made or yeah. just That's right. processed or so. My That's favorite credit, I ask all Kung Fu film fans to wait for the final credits because there's a credit to John Cusack's personal trainer, which is Benny the Jet Reguides, oh. who he worked with him in uh, Gross Point Blank. And I was so, oh, why couldn't you make him one of the Legionnaires too? I I'm going to watch it again and look for Benny the Jet amongst the Legionnaires. Those guys were great actors, the Legionnaires, the guys who were supportive, mm -hmm. and also the various uh, Huns and other... Uh, uh, Silk Road characters, really, really well done. Um, so let's let me just check. Okay, so let, let's go into what are we up to? We've been going for a half hour. Uh, okay. We have a checkout time coming, so we got to. <laughs> 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 um, so Dragon Blade guys, uh, definitely look for that when it comes out. Do not it. have huge expectations. Go to have fun and let's see what, whether they edit it. Wisely. Let's see what what version we yeah. get. <laughs> if they, if they edit right. the kung fu scene at the at the beginning, I will be enraged. But hopefully, they take out some of the dross at near the end that would be excellent and then um, because this is the thing you've, you've touched on you, you, you said years ago or one of the first times we were on the panel I think was was uh, how you know the Chinese government is allowing historical dramas they're not more so than any sort of current with regard to yes it's it's a it's a land it's a it's a minefield now to uh, I talked to Choi Hark, who uh, put out the taking of uh, Tiger Mountain, which I showed a scene from last night. Mm -hmm. and By Choi the Hark, way, didn't see any tigers in it. No, but that's a Tiger Mountain. You got to look carefully. At the <laughs> What's the matter with you, Chris? <laughs> um, I discussed. I, I His round to, devil eyes yeah, couldn't see yeah. it. <laughs> Maybe the mountain was shaped like a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was actually. <laughs> I think it was, because you just saw it being blown Is up. Is there a sequel, right? Escape from Tiger yeah. Mountain? Is that going to come <laughs> It's not, because that's my point. Yeah. <laughs> the point. Choi Hark was a very political filmmaker when, during his Hong Kong years. Uh, uh, that's what he was known for. Mm -hmm. A comic book style. He brought uh, Star Wars style special effects to Hong Kong cinema. But he was very political. So even him working in China at all always amazed me. And so when I saw him just bef uh, before he did the final cut of this movie, I said, what's the status? For someone of his reputation, the he maintains the Chinese government only vetted the script originally at the beginning. They vetted the script, asked for changes if they felt that it was not uh, valid, and then they have to see the finished cut, and then they can make whatever changes. They can demand whatever changes they want. You guys noticed that even though the style was very much Choi Hark, the story of Tiger Mountain is about the intrepid, noble Chi People's Liberation Army mm -hmm. uh, taking on a crime lord at the top of up Tiger Mountain. With his own personal army. Yeah. And, as, yes, and the heroes are all intrepid, modest, don't want a lot of money. You know, they're the classic propaganda Chinese characters, which is so... There's no nuance here. By the end of it, you thought it was a propaganda film directed by Choi Hart who's never kowtowed to anyone. And basically he spent, he directed the whole movie on his knees. And that's what's happening with everybody. I am very interested in Stephen Chow's next film, which has been announced as The Mermaid. Stephen Chow has spent his entire life dealing with triad gangsters and finally found his own freedom, making some of the most energetic and exciting movies of the last two decades. Will there be a Kung Fu Hustle too? I doubt it. Yeah. Because again, uh, it's whatever China allows. Right. And somebody like Wong Kar Wai, who made the Grand Master, although he didn't really make the Grand Master, he suffered the Chinese government on one side and the Weinsteins on the other, and now he will never finish that movie. 
even though I've seen personally four cuts of it, but they're none war par wine. One is, two of them are acquiescences to the Weinsteins, and two of them are acquiescences to different sections of Asia. They're not Wong Kar Wai. I doubt he'll ever make another movie, because he makes mo he, Freedom is all what it's all about. Johnny Toe, it's brilliant. Johnny Toe tried to acquiesce to what China wanted, and it resulted in a movie called Blind Detective, which is very instructive. I recommend highly a double feature of Johnny Toe's uh, Mad Detective, which is one of my favorite films, followed up by the Chinese-influenced Blind Detective. Mm -hmm. You'll see the difference. Was Mad Detective the one where he saw multiple personalities yes. as people? Yes. Oh, that he was saw, a crazy Well, not even multiple movie. personalities. People, it was, it was inside out before inside out. Right. Because right. he saw their emotions as separate people. And then, Anger was, could be an old lady. A fear could be a tiny boy. And then some people had more than others, too. Yes. And you never know who was who. But meanwhile, they went through a through line with that with an actual mystery story. It was, right. It's a brilliant work of editing and filmmaking, the Brovera. And then you see Blind Detective, which was nominally the follow-up. And, oh my, what the hell is going on in this movie? Right. But Johnny has been very smart because Johnny is wildly versatile as well as eclectic, as well as prolific. So he says, all right, I'm not even going to try anymore. The next movie is a musical. Wow. It's it's fascinating. I, I, kung fu when musical? I was when I was in no kung fu baby <laughs> wushu no kung fu. When I was in uh, when I was in Shanghai, a fan who listens to the show Leia Lua uh, took me <laughs> took me to a uh, took me to a, a film because she's like I know you love martial art movies yeah. that was in like a I, I don't know what it's like an art house or part of a school or something yeah. like that. And it was again like some of the stuff that you've talked about that you've shown on the kung fu extravaganza. Mm -hmm. uh, Period piece, mm -hmm. um, you know, warring clans and the the good noble clan, and it was very. It had all those elements that you were talking about, and I thought it was really, it was really fascinating. But it wasn't playing in what I guess would be like a big cinemaplex in Shanghai. It was mm -hmm. sort of off the beaten path kind of a thing, which yeah. I thought was. Did it feel like uh, like it, at the end like like a propaganda movie, or would it feel like a solid? I didn't know. I did. It, did. it felt. It felt like a decent, a decent yeah, yeah. martial art movie. I mean, considering all of these constraints that Rick and you were right, talking right. about, under all of those constraints, it felt like okay. This is. This is. This that's, that's very nice. Recently, there's a huge hit that just came out. The monk. It's known as the monk, or the monk comes down from the mountain. Mm -hmm. And again, my report. My it wasn't Eric this time, but other friends I have in China were were just going. It is so tragic. This movie. There's not a single thing that isn't wire assisted right. to, oh, wow. to a ludicrous degree, and this is Chen Kage, the great director of previous stuff. It's it's a fascinating era with a lot of great entertainment, as we all know. Sure. Entertainment is just <clears throat> this very podcast is an example of that. Entertainment is everywhere for your taking, and you can decide what's great and what isn't great. And so I'm not I'm not in. Uh, sad about the future of entertainment. I think that is in extremely good hands. I am, rem I am sad about the future of Kung Fu, which I don't think will be... At the odds of it being bright are, are, lo are getting lower every day. Well, let's talk about... We, we, we touched on the beginning uh, TV shows, and I want to talk about Daredevil. Yes. Because I like that TV show. I, I love that TV show. Um, and I'll say, I've been a Daredevil fan for many, many years. Would be the, both. the Frank Miller comics. Uh, I was long before the Frank Miller yeah. comics. Oh, I, really? I had the first okay. 50 issues of Daredevil oh, wow. that my mom threw away as soon as I went to college. <laughs> and I said, got rid of your retirement, old lady. Congratulations. <laughs> but, I, you know, that character, no one did what Frank Miller did with that character. That, I would disagree, but Lord knows Frank Miller was very important to the development of the character. Well, uh, okay. Has yeah. there ever been a time where just I'm talking about just the born again yeah. storyline, yeah. where a supervillain finds out a superhero's identity and then takes his life apart piece by piece until he goes nuts? Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the way it was handled was right. I'd never I never read or seen anything like. And that. is that where a majority of the source material you think is coming from for the TV, for the Netflix? Oh, show? absolutely. They yeah. recreate panels on the TV show. The characters, for sure. That yeah. specific storyline, no. But uh, the actual characters and pieces of it, absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I, when I, you know, I obviously binge watched it over about a week. Sure, that's maybe. how you're supposed yeah. to. And. Uh, <laughs> The fight scenes to me, I know they're not doing kung fu. No, but, and, but, but they're showing you why they're not. 
That's what I loved about the show, among many things. The, they're messy street fights. Right. They're messy street fights because Matt Murdock's character... Hasn't evolved yet. ...is messy. Yeah. Right. And the street... And street And his fighting yeah. reflects that, yeah. his style. He, he is and, proud of, of bloodied knuckles. Right. He, want, he wants to punish himself as much as he wants yeah, to punish Yeah, he's... Right. Well, that, that's, that's the thing he's, I love. He's actually fighting in character. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's fighting in character because he's got all this rage. Right. And it's... They're doing such a great setup to... When he becomes more, I mean, obviously the the last episode. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last the last episode he gets his costume, <laughs> right. and that's like, oh, so now season two is going to all be about him, like finally, like. Being... You know what season two is about? What the Punisher. Oh, that yeah. see that's that that that, that to the, me is great. The, uh, me too, because it's perfect for his character. Mm -hmm. They also have an entire episode of the first season about how he learned to fight from that great from uh, Stick from yeah from that great character. And, and you, so you see where he's going wrong. It's perfect for his thing. The only thing I would ask, if you're listening, guys who work on Daredevil, the one thing you're missing is one of the integral aspects of the Daredevil character. One of the reasons I first loved Daredevil was it reminded me so much of Zatoichi, yeah, yeah. which is the samurai the uh, series, the blind swordsman. Mm -hmm. And what was great about those shows, uh, those movies, every single one, was about how everybody else was more blind than he was. He couldn't see... But other, all the villains are always blinded by lust or by greed, and the people were all blinded by fear. It was about blindness. And the thing that makes Daredevil and Matt Murdock special is that he's blind. So I would use that more, especially in the fights. Because the way a blind man fights is different because he's not using his eyes. Well, here's, here's, here's what I think, based on what we're talking about, how what you said, the yeah. theme of blindness and this first season, how he's fighting as Chris said, in character. Mm -hmm. Because he's blinded by rage. Right. And that's great. You know, and I agree with that. And, and I, I hope that it. evolves. Yes, but I hope as the fighting evolves to right. be more... Yes, he will be more aware, but the thing is what I'm talking about is his literal physical blindness. In order to process information that's coming in you have to fight differently. In reality, if you are actually blind and, you know, my uh, Tai Chi world champion, uh, Steve Watson, who's my teacher and friend and partner. Does he get a bit of a pass because he has a radar sense, though? He does have a radar sense. <laughs> but he kind of sees course. red images. That's, that's yeah, that, that, yes, it's yeah. not a pass. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I'm not, he doesn't need a pass. I love the show. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying to the choreographers that, that well, we'll, Steve and I are planning a video podcast called How They Should Have Fought, and we're going to do an episode on Daredevil, just to show you what we're talking about in terms of how a blind person would react differently to a very specific Are you going to stimulus. actually recreate some of the fight scenes? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. That sounds so great. great. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> we're not probably going to get the rights to show the original, but we'll describe it, mm -hmm. and we might, we'll might be able to probably use uh, still You know what? Fair use. Right. Well, not the whole thing. Well, maybe. Well, you we'll could, you do could it do it. You could do a couple clips. We're trying to help. Folks. What's, what's, what's the worst they could do? Tell you to take it down. Yes. Or 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 what one uh, copyright troll has recently done, asked me for $500. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. For, That'll happen. Yes, that will happen. <laughs> so I'm aware of it. We'll see it. We'll, we'll take care of it, but be that as it may. <laughs> but I love Daredevil. Daredevil's a good show of what can be done, but we. I just want to, as always, push it a little bit more toward doing smart fights. Mm. They love making bravura fight scenes on that show, and it's something I really appreciate. And of course, I'm waiting for Iron Fist, and I'm waiting for, you know, Luke Cage. Are they in else. production yet? I know they were in development. I believe they are. I believe they are. Mm -hmm. And in fact, here at the Comic-Con, they're going to be, they've been secretly in production on the new Wolverine for weeks. Oh, yeah, okay. They're showing the preview here, and they, they kept that secret. More and more people are, are doing stuff like that. Hugh Jackman again? Hugh Jackman, mm -hmm. the last Hugh Jackman. This is his last one. Yeah, he said he's done. Oh, yeah, very much done. I think the whole movie is about the fact that he's done. Uh, but in any case, uh, comparing Daredevil to all the other fight-based shows, which are all the, all the comic shows, Arrow, uh, Flash, which is my favorite, yeah. and because uh, that's joyous. Everything else is so dark and right. so brutal and so self That's the one I watched self with my damaging. daughter. Yeah. That's it. Flash, Flash is the only one. Run. She's like, can I watch Arrow too? No. No. Run, Barry, run. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to Legends of, of Tomorrow. Right. Uh, or Legends of Tomorrow, I mm -hmm. should say. But again, especially on, on the Marvel shows, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter, everybody fights exactly the same. The women are fighting as if they were. But mostly men. on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. they're fighting the audience. 
<laughs> oh, what are you doing? You're going to get an email from Paige Branson. Yeah, I'm sure I will. She loves that show. She does a podcast dedicated to how great that show is. It's she, gotten better. She texted me yesterday going, Graham, can you please, they're giving out free Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. posters at the Marvel booth at Comic-Con. Did she, you get one? Of course I got nice. one. I took a picture of it and put it on Twitter. But it's also understandable that the action on television would be far more generic. They just don't have the time. Yeah, yeah I, 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 sure. I, I think that's a fair assessment. I think it's a budget thing too. Like Absolutely. you know, you know, to get a really good choreographer and to stage it properly costs money and time. You know how because on a big budget, if, if you so choose, on a big budget film, there's 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 money for like, hey, big actor, here's eight weeks to train. train right. right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I remember, you know, interviews with um, uh, blanking her name, Kill Bill, Beatrix Kiddo, Danny Lee, and, and he, Uma, Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman. Uma, Uma Thurman. Thurman. There yeah. we go. Yeah. She talked about she would come home sore. Yeah. For, she would train like eight hours a day, ten hours a day. You know what I mean? That, and, that, well, you see, I have to interrupt you there because that upsets me. <laughs> because, <laughs> reason, because, because honestly, guys, I, these are people maintaining the status quo. You do not have to train eight hours a day. The whole idea of good fighting is you're not using muscles. Right. You're not using your closed fist. You don't. I mean, one of my favorite things about I've spent also a line for the publicist too. I trained eight hours. Yeah. A day. It was a really Three, age. <laughs> I mean, I spent thirty years going through a thousand teachers until I found Steve Watson, and basically every teacher says. 20 years with me. You listen to me for 20 years and you're just beginning getting started. And Steve Watson leans in and goes, 20 seconds. You work with me for 20 seconds. You will be unmovable. Well, well uh, look, I don't, I don't disagree with what you're saying. In, yes. terms of, in terms of training for a film when you're an A-list actor, it's yeah. not just... That's because they're doing that generic fighting. Well, yeah, but also they, 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 they need to be in shape because they're going to be doing multiple takes. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can look like Poe the Panda for a and be animated. No, you, yes, I know what you're saying, but that is the status quo. That's the that's one of the reasons I believe the Weinstein's were so adamant about uh, lessening the power because they didn't want Chinese choreographers coming in because that would break up. You know, suddenly all the American guys wouldn't be getting as much work or any work anymore because these guys are streamlined. They they can teach you and have taught you. On the set, you go see a movie like Ip Man Final Fight, which is filled with the main stars not being Kung Fu people. You cannot tell. Right. And they're not training for six weeks to do that. Mm -hmm. It's just these guys, of course, because they're Kung Fu people themselves, their camera work, their choreography, they do it on the set. And you would not believe what they can accomplish. But, again, that would really disrupt... It, it would be as so they're teaching him like specific moves for the shot. Yes, and because they're great actors, I mean, and again, it's it, they used to do in, in kung fu movies twenty five moves without a cut. Mm. Now they'll cut a lot, but they'll teach you how to give it power. What they'll teach you is show you how to to look powerful without having to train eight weeks. Because again, it's not about muscles; it's about your inner energy. And <laughs> this is. Hard to believe. It's my little. We'll, we'll segue into my my ending uh, uh, promos. Um, if you use your inner energy, your chi, rather than your muscles, and if you use a sense of love rather than anger, you will not believe how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Love literally conquers all in a devastatingly destructive way. Nah. That is that is an amazing point. Yeah. Uh, there was the, about there was last year um, you know uh, there was a, a a kid came into a school in Atlanta with shocker history mm -hmm. of mental illness got easy access to guns and he wanted to do horrible things and this this teacher you know talked to him and said um, uh, you know I, I've su he's like I've suffered. You don't know my pain. He's you know he's out of it or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's in his manic rage or whatever it is, and uh, and she said you know I've gone through pain too. And my husband of twenty years left me, and 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 she goes and I love you. Yeah, kid didn't kill anybody. Right, very famous story of a of a guru in India who a mad dog killer comes in and shoves a gun against his head and says, "What would you say if I said I was about to kill you?" And the guy looked up with total conviction, total love, and energy emanating from him and said, I would die loving you. Yeah. 
and the guy fell to his knees, became a student. Now, of course, that sounds like nonsense. I have to tell you, the real Kung Fu looks like magic, and I've experienced it personally. The ending of Kung Fu Panda, I've experienced personally. And so I know that all of this is possible, but that's not what I want to force. I don't want everybody suddenly to be loving, and that's another complicating factor of adding this kind of choreography into entertainment, because the moment... I show up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and teach Ming-Na how to actually fight, the show becomes about her. Because you are looking at her after every subsequent fight, because suddenly she's fighting smart. She's doing awesome things. And it's kind of like the first time you ever laid eyes on Bruce Lee. Right. It's like, what is that? Let yeah. me see more of that. Right. And everybody else on the show is like, Ugh. It's hard to watch anyone else after right. that. And also you, you want to know what she's going to do. That's right. all these other guys are doing the generic, you know, yeah. closing your fists and using yeah. your anger. She walks on, and boom, it's done. I'm going to give you a summer movie question. True yes. or false? Mm -hmm. Inside Out, good kung fu movie. Excellent kung fu movie. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and in the listening audience, martial arts <laughs> is one thing. It's fighting. Whatever internal stuff that is being taught is, su is supporting the fighting, even to a degree to Aikido, which is the most energetically open Japanese martial art. Kung Fu is never one thing. It is not fighting. The highest form of Kung Fu, as Jackie Chan says in Dragon Blade repeatedly, is not to fight, to make your enemy your friend. But Kung Fu is internal, external, mental, physical, healing, martial. It's six things. It's a self-improvement system. So inside out, I teach. Uh, my, I developed my own form of Kung Fu, which started uh, under the title of Don't Hurt Rick. <laughs> and then when I started developing it for uh, other people, it became don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. The main law is a lot of people in the world may want to hurt you or hold you back. Don't be one of them. And ah. we teach you how to do that in a, in a true self-defensive way. Because not only can you defend yourself against people who might be so foolish as to attack mm -hmm. you, but against germs, uh, against stress, mostly against yourself. I mean, I, whenever I said, don't hurt Rick, I wasn't always talking to someone else. Sometimes I was looking in the mirror. Of course. You know, to, man, come on. Uh, but the Chinese do not like to use a negative at the beginning of a technique in terms of their interpretation or translation, so we didn't want to start with don't. So now the Chinese name of my... Please hurt words. Rick? No. <laughs> don't hurt Rick. But no, it's, it's open mind, open hand, open heart. Whenever you see a picture of me with Bitch. martial arts... Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Talk to, the, talk to the open hands. <laughs> Whenever you see me in a picture with other martial arts, they're invariably making fists, and I'm the one with my hands open and up. <laughs> we did that last night. In fact, if mm -hmm. you look at Facebook, you'll see where, uh, we have a shot with all our hands I, open. I, I, so I knew that, too, and I was watching Inside Out. I'm like, this is a lot of the Kung Fu principles. Oh, absolutely. Movie. Because Kung Fu is life. Kung Fu, mm -hmm. the translation, you can interpret Kung Fu, the word, in many ways. Mostly it's been done hard work, which I changed to good work. Just like you can interpret the word sword in the movie Hero 29 ways, you can interpret it, the, the Chinese words for Kung Fu. What we interpret it as is human achievement. Mm -hmm. It's everything you can be as a human. When you are doing, when you're a superhero, you're, you're, you're super. When you're a Kung Fu hero, you're supra. You're capable of doing whatever a human can do. And that ranges from Albert Einstein to Michael Jordan and beyond. What often happens in American teaching and even in Asian teaching of martial arts now and Kung Fu is they concentrate only on the physical. Yeah. My, the other subtitle for my stuff is Mindful Martial Arts. Mine is all mind-driven because I feel that that's, we are mind-driven. Where's your uh, school? I don't have a school. I do seminars. I did a seminar in Albany. I did a seminar in Boston. Steve Watson and I are developing a mind-body um, uh, seminar, which we will now advertise. And it's, I want to do it for corporations because, it's, again, it's like, do you want to be truly powerful as well as truly happy? Because you're searching for that, and this is, this is the way I found it. Well, then maybe, uh, you know, the Comedy Film Arts Corporation will hire Rick and, uh, you know, we'll have us, Neil, Jackie, yeah. Laura, and we'll let, all come let me, let me, let me, I'm in, dude. I'm in. <laughs> well, you know, Laura's in. She's yeah. all about meditating. And Neil will do it, too. In, in order to do that, I'm afraid I'm going to have to start practicing the thing I'm going to say virtually every couple of minutes. No, Graham. No, no, that's not the Graham. Please, it's not a discipline. It's not, you know, don't you, Graham? No, no. Chris, well, tell Graham no. 
Well, put the sword down. The, yes, well, that's right. Well, here's the. the it's, it's, it's funny you, you say that because my first entry into the internal that you're talking about right. was when I started studying uh, Iajitsu through Master Shima Bukuru because his book, Flashing Steel, is so funny. Mm -hmm. The whole first part of his book is not about technique or any of that. It's all about, it, it, like the opening page is like, so why are you even, why are we doing this? What mm -hmm. is the practical application of learning how to use a sword? And he goes, it's to, we want to cut down our own ego yep. and be of service and all of these things. And, and he goes, the training and fight zombies and fight zombies because uh, oh, okay. guess what my sword doesn't need to reload yeah. bitches. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like and that was that's what would drew me to it the first class I took I was like I think I've been looking for this my whole life mm -hmm. and it's why I want to explore you know I've talked about this other uh, other styles and I want to get into kung fu and tai chi and all because I want that he was like the technique is it's secondary. secondary. It is. Mm -hmm. It is because it's 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 it, yes. If someone were these are you could use these. If someone were to literally physically come at you, right. of course. But it's really about the discipline of yourself. Right. And and uh, you know he had a lot of demons, mm -hmm. and he had and he go. How do we deal with these demons? How do we get control of? Them? I know I have a lot of demons, and it's really helped me. You know when I go on my roof every morning and I'm stressed or I wake up angry or whatever about something. Mm -hmm. It it it, help, it helps me focus. It helps me calm down. It helps me get, like you say, get out of my own way. Right. Like I, you know, I don't think people are afraid uh, of failure. They're afraid of success. I, I mean, I firmly just just on any. I'm not talking about monetary. Yeah. You know, win the Super Bowl. I'm just talking about being successful as, as anything, as as a as a friend, as a as a, anything. Now, yeah, but now go beyond. They're afraid of death because sure. no matter whether they succeed or fail. The overwhelming feeling is of what is what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? And my attitude is don't ask yourself questions you can't answer. Understand that every book in the Library of Congress ends the same way. The end. So don't worry about the ending. Endings taken care of. Worry about don't even worry. Just concern yourself with the story. Do you want to be the hero of the movie of your life or do you want to be the asshole? Of the movie of your life? <laughs> <laughs> and basically that's what you concentrate on. We it, we again, we're teaching mindful martial arts, and we're not. But, and we're not using the blade is also really cool because the blade is an extension of your arm, which is an extension of your body. But we we go beyond that, and also you need. I feel you gravitated to that because you need that. You do Graham Fu, you do Chris Fu, I do Rick Fu. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to understand Mother Nature, understand human nature, but most importantly, maybe most importantly, understand your own nature. It like has was, to start remember, there. Yeah, remember when I was telling last night that each culture creates its own martial art in that reflects its culture. You know, Kung Fu Panda did that. Yeah, Muay Thai. Well, I showed right. I showed movies from Korea, Japan, and Thailand in addition to China last night at the at the show, and you could see clearly that their martial arts were a reflection of their culture. So that actually, the new Kung Fu movies are being made by an animated bear. Pretty much. That would be good. I wouldn't mind that in the slightest. And also, so don't be the William Atherton of your life. <laughs> oh, don't. Uh, he came from my hometown. I saw him in productions when I was a kid. No, Bill. Bill. No, he's a great guy, but I'm just yeah. saying, he always plays the dick. In every yeah, movie. that's right. Don't just, be the dick. Don't I, be the you meant, the minute, I couldn't yeah. remember his name, so when you guys so now, are talking, yeah. I looked him up. Yeah. So now, Rick. Um, Let's talk about, we got to wrap this up. Yeah. What, what movies, what, what martial arts movies are coming up that you're looking forward to? That we want to play. Absolutely. Absolutely none. <laughs> Absolutely none. Ant Man. I'm looking forward to. Not looking forward to Fantastic Four. Uh, now it's it, there are no. There's. I cannot see any kung fu on the horizon. Well, just uh, martial arts, not necessarily kung fu. Anything. Oh gosh. Well, Inside yeah. Out was. Uh, I will go back and see that again. Uh, I want to see. I want to see the director's cuts on the DVD of uh, uh, Mad Max, mm -hmm. of Avengers Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. By the way, that had exceptional Kung Fu. The Vision is a Kung Fu character right. in, in Age of sure. Ultron. That final, I was just, I was born yesterday. It's, it, it's, I look for smart people. And when you're smart, you use your mind, and that's Kung Fu. And that, and that will direct how you fight. Watch, watch, go back to Age of Ultron and watch how the Vision fights. Mm -hmm. Even that is informed. 
Uh, that's what I always like. I want everybody to fight and carry. But like, isn't anything coming, getting imported, like some of the stuff you showed last night? Is there some other things that you're excited about? That's what I was talking fight? about. The monk who came down from the mountain, SBL2, okay. I was excited for it. Jackie mm. Chan has a new movie with Johnny Knoxville directed by Rennie Harlan. You can already tell how good that's going to be. Mm. Uh, yeah. Called Skip Trace. So this is what's happening. I look forward to all of them, but in a way I dread new Kung Fu movies. Because I know, I feel, I don't know, I feel I will be disappointed. We were excited for the ones you showed last night, that's for sure. I, we, I want to thank publicly, and I thank last night, WellGo USA, because now, after everybody has fallen away and gone out of business, they're the, pretty much the last game in town. And they no, do, but they have a website, so could people go to WellGo USA and yes, see what's coming up? absolutely. And in fact, they have. you can sign up for their newsletter, and I wrote... The, uh, they have a column in their newsletter called "What We're Into," and they asked me to write the July for the July. Oh, edition. fantastic! So there, though, you get movie recommendations. What's coming? Yeah, up, things like and of that, course, right? you always go to my site, rickmyers.com. Okay. Leave the K off of Segue Rick. right into the for Perfect. Yeah. Well, and let's get into now. You th th this this project with Steve Watson. You guys are going to do a Kickstarter with this? Uh, no, we're not doing Kickstarter with that. What I'm doing with Kickstarter is a result of the producer not allowing myself and the directors to go to China and interview the great. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. My movie, uh, Films of Fury, the Kung Fu movie movie, uh, which I did not direct, but I wrote, we were, both I and the two directors, the two Andes, w were fully expecting and were promised that we were going to be sent to China uh, to interview all the surviving greats, from Jackie and Jet to Donnie and all, and all the choreographers as well. I was so excited about that because although I've worked on other documentaries in the past, I was never allowed to interview the people because the directors who knew nothing about Kung Fu wanted to have that. I want them to tell me. I don't want to know anything before I go to see them. And the moment they, they show up, they ask, they ask a baseball player a football question, and the baseball player says, this player says, this guy's an idiot, and right. starts giving him football, you know, right. uh, d dismissive answers. But we weren't allowed to do that. It, as, if anybody who's seen the documentary still on iTunes, I believe, and, and Netflix, you see that they, they turned it into animation as a bridge. And so now I, the greatest Kung Fu filmmaker of all time, La Kali Young, died two years ago. I'm not, the masters are dropping like flies. And I'm saying if, if I don't go and interview them for posterity, this will all be lost. Because oh, I think okay. it's the end of the genre. Again, I think it's, it started as a celebration. It's becoming memorial. So I'd like to get, I think I'm going to ask for $68,000, which is a lucky number in Hong Kong or in China. And uh, I already have all the connections there to set up these interviews. And, I want, and also the extras, the offers I'm going to give at each stage of contribution are impressive if you like these guys. I will give you the entire interview and autographs and things like that, pictures. When are you launching? I think August 1st. I'm planning to do it August 1st. Right now, and I think it'll stay this way, it's called Films of Fury, The Once and Future Interviews. But all I do is to do hours long, minimum two hours long, definitive, entire careers, the truth about Kung Fu films, the truth about their lives, the truth about Kung Fu. And I'm telling you, a lot of people, uh, when you see it on Facebook and all these Kung Fu film sites, oh, Jackie Chan is just a stuntman. Jackie Chan is just yeah, a yeah. filmmaker. He, he's an awesome Kung Fu guy. Because he's a real kung fu guy, he didn't stick with one technique. Because you know, as I always say, it's the human body, the human mind, the world around you. The rest is money and ego. You know, it's my style, this style, right. that style. It's all the human body, the human mind, the world around you. Jackie totally understands that. He may be the last bastion of that now that Jackie is so, retired. So people can go to your website and get updates on the yes uh, and Kickstarter and, and everything. Kickstarter. Uh, and say your website once more. RickMyers.com. R I C. M E Y E R S. Right. The K off of Rick for Carmel. Now, one of the things I want to mention too is in the CFN iTunes store, all of um, Rick's products are loaded up. All his oh, books great. are there, so you can go to the CFN iTunes store and get not only his books, but also I believe the movie is there as well. But if you want um, the hard copies of the books, you can actually order them from the CFN store. In fact, we have a Kung Fu uh, movie gift pack where you get um, Rick's book and you also get a Death Grip, Eric Jacobus's book. I also, might want, I also want to mention that uh, since I only get to do this once a year, that probably before next year comes out, the, graphic, the Kung Fu graphic novel that I did with Mike Avon Oming, the uh, artist on Powers and uh, the executive producer of the Powers Xbox show, will hopefully be out. It's called Dragons on Fire. Oh, great. Oh, sweet. I finished writing it and uh, Mike is finding time between producing and 
doing his other comic books to finish illustrating it. Fantastic. Well, guys, check back with rickmyers.com and uh, another fun show, man. Yeah, yeah you guys. Yeah, we love doing it every year. Love, yeah. we'll, we'll be back next year. This is always great. So, and uh, we want to thank the fans, too, for coming out. We had a lot of uh, yeah, Comedy Film Nerd fans came over and said hi. You guys are great, and I hope you can make it out to, uh, Podcast. to Podfest. We had some Film Nerd fans that came to see me uh I do uh, a Doug Loves Movies at uh, American Comedy Co. the Wednesday, July 8th. That was a lot of fun. So thank you guys to all that. And, uh, you know, as we say, like us, positive reviews, all those cool things you can do for free, and then spend 20 bucks with us once a year, and that keeps us afloat. Yep. Um, so thank you so much, Rick Myers. Thank you so much, Chris and Graham. Uh, no, Graham. <laughs> Put down that table, Graham. What's wrong with you? The table is trying to hurt me. No. Um, well, my name is Graham Elwood. And I'm Chris Mancini. And as always, remember Han shot first. I told you that already. Yeah. <laughs>